so I've been asked to um, uh, talk about new technologies for fruits and vegetables. Since we, you could see this morning that uh, in our area we work with the uh, food uh, processing industries. So what I'd like to do with, uh, with this workshop is to show you uh, that there are some uh, opportunities, that there just still are some opportunities to innovate in the sector of processed fruits and vegetables. And, and, I, and I, will, I, will, I will try to show you in which way uh, we could uh, work together, <coughs> in which topic we could work together. And at the end of the workshop, I think the discussion, we can start discussion to show, to see if uh, you have ideas of collaboration and it can be a base for the workshop of tomorrow um, regarding uh, KVBE uh, topics. last year on the topic of fruits and vegetable processing. Uh, we will make a focus on three innovative uh, technologies. I will talk about some projects uh, that we supported, supported uh, within the PESL and uh, I will also talk about the networks that are ex existing in that uh, area. So, um, I wanted to show you that the evolution of the consumption of fruits and vegetables <coughs> is a chance for processed food. And I will take the example of France because that's the market I best know. Um, we know that um, from, uh, since 1960, uh, the expenses of uh, food products are um, uh, decreasing, but we can see with the data there that for fruits and vegetables, uh, it's quite stable. And uh, some uh, studies show that, in fact, um, this, despite, in spite of the crisis, um, the consumption of, um, for fruits and vegetables are more uh, frozen or canned foods instead of fresh foods. So it shows that that's a chance for uh, processed fruits and vegetables. And if I focus on vegetables, uh, in, in France, the consumption is about uh, 64 kilograms per consumption per year, per consumer per year. And about that, 45% are processed vegetables. So that's a first good news for processed foods. And um, until now, we, uh, the processed vegetables were reserved to people with high income. And now uh, the tendency has changed, and uh, people with high income uh, eat more fresh fruits and vegetables. And it, it shows that, in fact, uh, processed fruit and vegetables are more um, widespread in the population. So the second good news because uh, it means that the potential of consumer for processed foods and uh, for processed vegetables is higher. Okay. And the, the last study in 2010 showed, uh, showed that the largest scale in, uh, in sales were recorded for um, ready to eat uh, fruits and vegetables. That's a good base for us for innovation. Uh, now let's talk about sustainability. Sustainability is the, the key word of this uh, peak meeting at this time. And um, we, regarding processes, uh, we know that all the, uh, 
processes that are developed now answer to the three main um, topics of sustainability, economic, social, and environmental. And in fact, a good thing is that um, this is supported from um, um, funding instances. For example, the KBB opened a call um, and a topic on sustainability. It is a topic uh, 2.5 on environmental impact on the total food chain. But may maybe it is something we can discuss tomorrow morning if we want to build a project together. And also in France, the National Research Agency opened a call which is called ALID, uh, which thematic is um, sustainable food systems. So we can find some. Uh, Found some funds to, to build such projects in sustainability. Um, and sustainability was also the main topic of uh, a symposium that occurred last, last year in France. It was organized, organized by the INRA, which topic was um, fruit and bag processing. So it seemed, it seemed for me that it was interesting to give you some elements and some conclusions we had during this meeting. So I will uh, give you the, the main conclusions. So, um, there were, uh, this, this, um, this symposium uh, organized by the INRA um, was based on four sessions. The first one on with, was the uh, focused on research in nutritional quality of uh, processed food and veg. Um, the second one was on safety and microbiological quality. The, second, the third one was uh, focused on uh, consumer expectation. And the last one was on uh, innovative and sustainable processes. And you can see that all these um, sessions are, uh, um, can be a source of innovation. Uh, on the session uh, focused on nutri uh, nutritional quality of processed fruit and veg, the conclusion that there were, were that there was lots of work done uh, to preserve nutrients of processed foods, lots of work done to valorize um, antioxidant properties, and um, work done on the modernization approaches of pro uh, Processes impact. <coughs> During the session on safety, um, the, the main conclusion was that uh, we um, that there there's been some development for uh, rapid analytic methods, and but that we still lack some data to compare innovative and, uh, tra versus traditional processes and their efficacy on, uh, on, on microbiological safety. And um, one of the conclusions was all that there are still, lot, uh, still work to do on, uh, to understand the synthesis, the formation of uh, neoformed components. The third session was on consumer expectation, and there, surprisingly, there were few projects presented, few uh, posters presented. It means that it's not, at the moment, a topic that is uh, widely um, studied by uh, research center, technical centers, and I think it's a pity because um, the um, consumer expectation will lead the market and it may also be uh, uh, an area in which we could um, build some projects. The first session was on innovative uh, processes, and it's maybe uh, the most important one. So, of course, during this session, um, the 
we talked about the best known innovative technologies with, uh, for example, high pressure, comic heating, and uh, first electric fields. I will talk about it afterwards. These technologies are now um, available at uh, industrial uh, scale, but they still need some development uh, for industrial transfer and also to improve these processes. The conclusion was that um, there were lots, lots of works done uh, on development of innovative processes and their integration in the food chain. There were do uh, works done on the combination of innovative and uh, traditional processes, for example, like using pulse electric field um, with uh, extraction of juice to improve the extraction yield. Uh, there were lots, lots of work done on the understanding of mechanisms, for example, to, to see the impact of technologies on um, the texture. And there was also study uh, that were done to um, determine which, for which applications uh, each technology is uh, more, uh, the most efficient. So uh, the, the objective is to uh, couple application and technology to have the best um, results. And uh, what was said at the end of the, this session is that for the future, it, we still have uh, to work on the comprehension of mechanisms, um, to go further on the combination of technologies, on the adaptation of technologies for specific applications, the modernization of, proce of process also. And I would like to add uh, something that I think important was not said in the, during the symposium, uh, that I see as important is the work on uh, selection or uh, creation of varieties that are um, suitable for processing. For example, development of um, um, fruits or vegetables which texture is adapted to the, to the processes, to the cutting or the, um, the heating, the cooking. Because we see that uh, companies have uh, wonders about, about that. So I will now um, give some example of uh, three uh, best known innovative technology in the field of um, processed foods to show you that this technology uh, worked for a long time but there are still some work to do to improve them. For example, Pulse Electric Field. Uh, it's a technology that is, uh, which principle is the application of a non-continuous voltage on food products, which is used for debacterization, for example. Uh, it's been developed for a long time. It's today available at industrial scale, but not so developed because of investment costs, um, but we, we still could work on the optimization of certain uh, elect electronic components to improve the efficiency of the process. The, a second um, innovative technology is high pressure. Uh, it's Principle is the application of pressure on the um, on the product to um, make some uh, state evolution, and this uh, high pressure technology is also efficient. Uh, but uh, this technology has uh, can show uh, interest in development of, of new foods. The technology is well known, but uh, the innovation would, uh, would be to, you know, to 
imagine new food with this technology. At least omic heating. Um, this this technology is also um, uh, available at uh, industrial level. But today, uh, it, it would be important to work on the cooling and on the work on texture uh, of products that we that, that can be used uh, in home heating. I will now talk about some projects that we uh, supported within the PEFL on innovative processing. One project was on um, was named PE3F2. It was a project developed uh, to um, develop a low energy new process for fruit product preservation. Was, uh, the, lead, the, part, the, the leader of this project was a, a, a company um, supported by a um, research center. Tampon Tiox was an um, academic project which aimed at uh, um, studying the new processes for preservation of food processed food products. Reactial was another project uh, which aimed at uh, developing an integrated approach for, for food production to make it possible to maintain integrity of the nutritional compounds. And this, the, the, this project Reactial uh, was an academic project, and with, uh, within this project, a new one was built, uh, more applied to tomato, optitum. So that, for example, of projects that we supported and that we could uh, also build together. And now I would like to show you uh, some of the actors that we have in a. Uh, Around the PEFL, which are um, expert in the in the field of processing, for example, the INRA, uh, um, the ESA, Montpellier Supagro, uh, Polytech Montpellier, the CIRAD, and research uh, the University of Avignon, uh, the CTCPA, and also Alimentech. All those actors can be um, actors of project in, within the processed food area. And to finish, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the, some network uh, on the topics that um, exist at European level or at French level. The first one um, is the, a network that was built last year after the symposium. Um, it's an academic network which is called Sustainable Foods and Processing for Healthy Diet. The contact is, someone, is a researcher from the INRA. And the, the aim of this uh, network is to put together um, all research centers acting in the field of processed foods. And in France, we also have a, a network that is called Rarity. Um, it's a network uh, which um, um, join some uh, technical centers and research centers also for process foods. So uh, my presentation is finished and uh, I would like to know if you uh, have some uh, topics, some points on which we would like to, to work or in which we would uh, search some actors, some uh, uh, skills to build some project uh, in this area of process. I don't know if it gave you some idea.
Hello? So in our case, we will be more than welcome if we could participate under this KBBE Sustainable Agriculture uh, Project. Another thing is that if uh, based on our profile, we could be suitable or not for, for your ideas on this project. But I would like to discuss during the next day and a half if we have a chance to see if we have some connection links that we could uh, work together. So I can say from what I saw. Thank you. For the moment, I don't have any idea. I mean, uh, we have to be together and or maybe to uh, contact also the research centers or technical centers that we, uh, which we are in contact with, to know if they have some idea also. Uh, afterwards, we can link together. Thank you.